This is Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Access Television. for the Red Hawks. The center is 57, Dylan Appenau. The guards are 66, Andrew Logan, and 79, Hunter Wilson. The tackle is 65, Jackie Fong, and 59, Ethan Russell. Tight ends, number 85, Donovan Offman, and number 38, Kenny Moulton. The fullback is 45, Alec Kirkendall. Halfbacks are number 19, Josh Szymanski, and number 2, Edo McMillan. Taking the snaps tonight for the Red Hawks is number 10, Garrett DeForest. Coached by Mr. Don High School football on Frontier Community Access Television. Tonight's game, the Frontier Red Hawks play host to the Red Chicopee Hawks. Pacers. And here come the Red Hawks coming in with a 5-1 record. Going up against the Pacers who have a 4-2 record. Joining me at the mic, John Meisner. So, John, this is an interesting matchup. This was supposed to have been the Frontier Red Hawks traveling to Turner's Falls tonight. But the Turner's Falls program folded, so they added on Chicopee. And ironically enough, this has playoff implications because Frontier comes in ranked second in the Division 7 power ratings, while Chicopee comes in ranked fourth. This is a pretty important matchup, I think, for both teams, but certainly for Chicopee if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive. Yeah, funny how things work out. You know, nobody expected this at the start of the season with the Turner's Falls program being shut down. But uh, it's nice that it works out the way that both uh, teams are playing for playoff implication. Like you said, I think Chicopee needs this more than Frontier, but uh, but still, it'd be nice for Frontier to get another win tonight. Frontier's probably going to win the league, so they're probably going to go to the playoffs. Next week, they play at home against Athol on senior night. I don't see the Red Hawks barring a massive letdown, losing that game. So if they can win this game, they certainly are going to be in the driver's seat. Some would say they already are. But this is, like I said, much more important for Chicopee. And, mm -hmm. uh, and they're going to come out here blazing. They've got a quarterback who apparently is pretty crafty in Steven Mata. And they've got some guys in the backfield, John Gonzalez Vega and Jerome Jacobs. Uh, Frontier is going to have to try and do their best to control the line of scrimmage. Last week, Frontier played against Franklin Tech in a, in a game that was somewhat uneven in the first half, at least, for Frontier. A lot of penalties, a lot of uh, mistakes were made, but they were able to hang on and win that game 20-6 and uh, continue on their winning ways. But this is not going to be easy. A chick will be taking some extra time in the end zone talking Dover, and uh, we'll see what happens as we get ready to go here from, uh, good, from uh, South Deerfield mm -hmm. Frontier Regional School. Yeah, I mean, that just shows that Chicopee wants this game a lot more if they're taking all that extra time to talk. But uh, yeah, if they are going to win this game, though, they can't uh, play the way that uh, Frontier did last week. Like you said, they're going to have to play clean football. They're going to have to play discipline. Same for Frontier. So it should be a good matchup tonight. Chicopee defensively is going to have to deal with Edo McMillan. He's the, the the rushing leader in the in the region right now, in Franklin County anyway. Garrett DeForest still a quarterback. And, of course, in the backfield you've got uh, Josh Szymanski and also Alec Kirkendall. And expecting to be mixed in there at some point will be Jake Dodge, who recently was green-lighted to play after transferring, ironically enough, from Turner's Fall. So a lot of weapons for Don Gordon in the backfield. But the real story, I think, for Frontier football this year has been the defense, especially mm -hmm. the front left, front defensive line, which has really been solid. Absolutely. The defense has played terrific all season long. And um, I've been impressed more than anything with uh, with Edo McMillan. He's, I think he's been one of their biggest weapons uh, this year for Frontier in the games we've covered. He's just a tremendous running back. doesn't surprise me he's leading the, the, the league, really, in rushing yards. What's interesting is that DeForest, who's – was a running back last year and was converted to quarterback has been throwing the ball pretty well as well. I mean, he's had some good to, some good targets. Donovan Hoffman, I think, the tight end is one of his big targets. Um, but he can throw the screen pass. And the thing about Frontier is they're not just one look. They can run 
a lot of different running patterns at you. They like to run the sweep with Ito, but they can also run cross bucks. They can also run counters. Uh, so they can throw a lot of different looks at you. One of the things that I've been intrigued by Frontier defensively is in a couple of the games that we've done, you, they've gone against offenses that tried to spread the field, and they were still effective. Their end play is very effective, and they're able to, to adjust to whatever offenses throw at them, which is incredibly important, especially uh -huh. getting down to the wire here. Right, yes, yeah, it's definitely a game of adjustments. It makes it that much harder to prepare on the, on the defense, really, because if you don't know what's getting thrown at you, you know, it's, it makes your game plan a little tougher, but... Uh, We'll see who can adjust better. Absolutely. So Pioneer, <laughs> for Chicopee, I want to say Pioneer because of the yellow colors. So Chicopee <laughs> now is getting ready to come up uh, to the their far yeah, side of the field. We got and we're going to have the coin toss. Frontier Band is here. The the relatively sparse again, crowd, though. It could fill in at some point. This was, again, originally supposed to have been played at Bordeaux Field in Turner's Falls, but was not because uh, of the Turner's Falls program not being there. Although Turner's Falls... Uh, players are playing for Mohawk this year in a cooperative program, a program that started off looking like it was going to be pretty good, and they've, they've had an uneven kind of last couple of weeks. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll see that Mohawk program, that cooperative program, on Thanksgiving Eve, I believe, here in South Deerfield. We'll have that game for you on Frontier Community Access Television. The both teams getting ready to toss the coin, and... I'm not sure what the delay is. Referees talking with the Chicopee coaching staff, and we'll be ready to go here pretty soon, I would think. Just trying to build the suspense, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is definitely a small crowd. You're right. I think it's. I think there's two reasons for that. For one thing, I th nobody expected this to happen in the first place, and the other is because it's really cold tonight. It's only about 34 degrees out, I think. Yeah, it's. It, it's just always what happens when you. But <coughs> trust me, you don't know cold. Yeah. <laughs> until, you call, until you call the Super Bowl game in December in the stands in Holyoke when they let you in the press box. That happened to Bobby C. and I a couple oh, of years ago, and that was, that was not a lot of fun. But uh, this, is, this is warm compared to that. But uh, yeah. we, are, we are getting ready, I think, to get going here. I'm not sure what the discussion is on the far sideline with the Chicopee quarterback, or Chicopee uh, coach, rather. Looking ahead, though, um, if Frontier is able to win tonight and, and they may advance to the playoffs, uh, next week, of course, we have Athol here for Senior Day. And then the following two weekends are playoff action. And I am fairly certain the way it's shaping up now that Frontier will probably host a preliminary game here. And I believe if they get past that round, there will be another game, and I, I'm pretty sure a neutral location. That's how it usually works. Sometimes they play it at Mahars. It depends on, on the, the facility, depends what the MIA decides to do. But mm -hmm. I think the Frontier's got a real good look at a Super Bowl this year, probably as good look as they've had in the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, Don Gordon's done a nice job with this team. He's really gotten the most out of his defense, and, uh, and the, the running backs have had a great year as well. It's, uh, it's why, I th why I think they're in position to win. Uh, to win a championship but uh, you know it helps to have experience and uh, leadership that's for sure not only that but you also have to be concerned going into the postseason about the teams from the Berkshires the t you know, there's a couple of teams now like Monument Mountain is in the league now but typically you don't see those teams until you get into the playoffs and I don't know I've heard Huzik is pretty good there's a lot of great talent up in the Berkshires and uh, they play a, a, a different brand of football it's much more of a a mix running and passing attack. Mm. They, they play a spread formation, but it's it's a it's a very different look. It's sort of like it, it reminds me a lot of basketball in the sense that in the in the postseason in basketball, Franklin County teams will see Berkshire teams throw an entirely different look at them, and it's mm -hmm. the same thing in football as well. But uh, anyway, we're gonna have uh, the starting lineups, and we'll have the well, we have the starting lineups already. We're gonna have the coin toss and the. Uh, National Anthem upcoming here from South Deerfield on Frontier Community Access Television. Kevin Murphy, the executive producer of Frontier Community Access Television Sports, is here along with Alec Echo. Alec's been working a lot this week with Senior Nights. By the way, any of the games that you were unable to get to for Senior Night action, you can find them all at the FCAT Media page on YouTube. They will also run on FCAT Channel 12 at various times. If you want to watch them on demand, all you got to do is uh, go to the YouTube channel and uh, check it out and uh, get ready to enjoy some Frontier Sports. And of course, once fall season ends, 
We'll be getting into the winter, and we'll have uh, a lot of things happening. We've got, of course, basketball. We have uh, Greenville High School Hockey, which is a cooperative program involving a number of Frontier players. And it will be out and about quite a bit this winter uh, as the weather gets colder and the sports heats up. For yeah. the Pacers, Both captains are coming out now to number get the toss State squared Dunn away. Sagan. Number 50, Desmond Martinez. Like I said, big game for both teams, but probably bigger 13, for Chicopee. Mm -hmm. Jerome they want to be in the, in the hunt in uh, Division 7. Mm. Number one it's unusual the way they've reshuffled the football the alignment Hawks, number in terms of the playoffs. It used to just be Andrew Logan, uh, number 10, two top Derek teams would end up at the Super Bowl. But now they've, and I think it's kind of good that they, it's, it's good Donovan in the sense Hoffman. that if you're not in the playoffs, you get two extra weeks of football because they have, they, they schedule a bunch of different kinds of games. So either way, you get a little more football, a couple more weeks of football, and that's always a good thing for these programs. Yeah, it's unfair for the top two teams if you know they're the only ones that make it to the end. So it's, at least it keeps at least it keeps people's interests yeah, uh, a little and, longer. And you never know what's going to happen in the playoff game too. That's the other thing is, mm -hmm. is, is and most of these teams that, that end up in the playoffs they're there for a reason. But you never Frontier know what's going to happen. Will Frontier will receive kickoff. to start the game, and Chicken people will be moving left to right as we get going, and uh, we're just gonna stand by for the National Anthem and the kickoff as the Frontier Redhawks play host to the Chickabee Pacers in a late season game with major playoff implications in Division 7. This time we would ask everyone to pr please rise, remove their hats, as the Frontier Regional Band honors America by playing our national anthem. And we are about to get underway here from South Deerfield. And this is going to be a good game, I think. It's going to be an interesting matchup. <clears throat> and we'll see. It's going to see just how good Frontier is. I mean, this Chickabee team, like I said, is nothing more dangerous than playing a team that's, I don't want to say desperate, but one that needs a win. And Frontier, like I said, last week against Franklin Tech, somewhat uneven performance. Still a winning performance. They got 20 points. Number 13, Jerome but, Jacobs uh, to kick off for the Pacers. I think that some people would, would say that going into that game, I would have thought Frontier two. would have beaten them by more than that. But again, that's why they play the games in the field. That's right. Yeah, this definitely has a playoff feel to it tonight. The weather's a little colder. Got two good teams going at it. Uh, yeah, I, I, ex I expect a better performance out of Frontier. I think they'll play up to their level of competition tonight, like last week. <laughs> Edo McMillan back deep for the Red Hawks at about his own 15-yard line. And getting ready to boot it away is number 11, Gunnar Sagan. That's going to be a short kick, picked up at about the 25. And run back to about midfield, which is where Frontier will take it over first and ten. Red Hawks first and ten from the Frontier 44-yard line. 
Foul will be spotted, yeah, just inside the 45. At about the 44. We'll see what Garrett DeForest brings up for an offensive pattern to start this game. He's got McMillan, Samaski, and Kirkendall in the backfield. And the give is going to go to Ito on the right side. Ito off tackle. Ito McMillan pushes up ahead to about the 48. Nothing fancy there, just a straight right dive there. The it's a gain of about four. Of three, it's a simple run to start. Seven. Second and a long six for the Hawks. Ito again. Same play pretty much. This time he finds a hole and is close to first down yardage. Very close to a Red Hawk first down. He found a nice hole that time. Found a good lane to run through to get close to the first down marker. And I think he's got it. They're going to say, yep. He'll move the oh, chains. Enough. <laughs> and the ball spotted just outside the 45 of Chicopee. Jason Lozado on the stop for the Pacers. And the pitch goes on the left side. And that's Samaski breaks through into the secondary and another first Josh down Samaski. as Josh Samaski down to about the 31. Steven running backs, these first few plays are taking advantage of that Chicopee defense. Down. See, they've got the back on their heels a little. Yeah, Samaski came blow, blasting out of the backfield. Got a nice hole, good uh, open. And first and 10, 31 of Chicopee. Hawks in business, heading for the red zone. Another inside give. Samaski on a carry. Samaski is up to about. And he gained a couple Daniel, on that, looks like. Two yards, second and eight. Maybe second and eight. Just inside the 30 yard line. Again, clock in motion, first quarter, first possession for the Frontier Redhawks. Same setup, full house backfield behind Garrett. And this goes to Ito, and he runs into a Edo big wall of carry. blockers. And he might have got a yard. Let's see what they spot. John Gonzalez Vega on the stop. Yep, got about one. So it'll be third and about third and seven. seven for the Hawks. So that time, whatever Chickabee sniffed out, whatever Frontier was trying to do there. So pretty much a straight ground attack so far for Frontier. And hand off inside to Samaski the fullback to Samaski, and I don't think he got much. So it's going to be fourth Jabari and Dancy. about six. No gain on the play. It'll be fourth and four for the Red Hawks. Ball spotted uh, just outside the 25 to the 26 yard line. And they'll go for it here in four down territory. Samaski so lines up in the right slot. Now goes in motion. And Forrest rolls out and gets hit. Got the ball away, but was going to get sacked. And the Red, Hot, Red Hawks turned over on downs. A well, big fourth down stop Pacers there for Chickabee. I didn't think they would go back to the to the pass play. I thought they'd go to a, a McMillan or uh, or Samaski again, but uh, wanted to change it up in front. And Chickabee was ready for it. Well, the Forest was he had uh, Sagan all over him. They, you know, Chickabee read that very very well. So it'll be a turnover on downs. First and ten. Chickabee going the other way. 8:45 to go first quarter. No score. It's the quarterback Steve Mata from the class of 21. Brings it up, he has eye formation. On the near side, it's like an offset eye, actually. And the handoff goes to the outside. And taken down out of bounds. John Gonzalez Vega on the carry. Gonzalez Vega on the five. run there, and he picks up uh, about five. Gain of Frontier on the sideline, had to be careful there when sliding into the sideline. <laughs> Gonna be second and four. Well, that, that was a nice little little run play there, a little spread formation that Ido got the end and made the tackle, but let's see if Chicopee can do that again. The near side wideout is Sagan. 
Again, an eye formation. Mata with the inside hand off the tailback. Good hole. And he's Gonzalez close to Vega first down again. yardage. That's Gonzalez Vega again. And I Donovan believe they're going to move the chains. Josh Samaski on a stop. Carry good for a pacer first down. First and 10, Chicopee. Ball first spotted 10, at the, from the 40 yard line. Yard line. You will know, see how Frontier's defense adjusts to Gonzalo, uh, excuse me, Gonzalez Vega as the game goes on here. He's, he's found a couple holes all early. Yeah, that, uh, that Chicopee front four opened up a couple of nice holes. And there's going to have to be an adjustment made at some point. Double tight end formation again, I formation as well. And same play, but this time he gets stood up and brought down hard. Yeah, he was going nowhere that time. No, Got a couple of yards, though, but that's it. Yeah, I think they were a little more prepared that time. They couldn't get much anywhere on the ground. They're only about two yards on the ground. Second and eight. Clock is in motion. 7.15 to go, first quarter. And the Red Hawks. Again, looks like Gonzalez Vega is going to be the workhorse, but he's also got help back there with Jacobs and Sagan on the tight end. One wide out on the far side. I formation set. And they're going to throw it. And pass it down the side. Nearly intercepted and it's closing in on it. For Frontier was number 24, Sam Hebert. Very nearly picked that off. Well, I thought Hebert was going to pick that off for a second. That was in the air. <laughs> that was a... Could have been picked Pacers off, but uh, he's probably kicking eight. himself for not getting. A little bit of a dying quill there. Was the that, that ball kind of hung up there a little bit. Yeah, it reminds, reminds me of that Monday night game earlier this week. I think there were four interceptions. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hebert was closing down on it. So third down and eight from about the 43-yard line of Chicopee. Same setup. Jacobs is the near side wideout. Now they go an offset eye in shotgun formation for Maddox. So back there is David Charles. Handoff goes to Gonzalez Vega. He's out of bounds. I don't think he's got the first down, though. He's close. Let's see where they mark it here. Oh, they did give him the first. Okay, I didn't, I didn't think he got it, but looks like he did. Must have got exactly eight yards in that. And we're into Frontier territory. Ball spotted at the Frontier 48-yard line. First and 10, Chicopee from the Red Hawk. Yeah, Gonzalez Vegas quick out of the backfield line. for sure. If he gets a hole, he could easily break one. Yeah, that's for sure. And same formation set up. Jacobs in the right slot. It's going to be a shotgun set. Now Jacobs goes in motion, left to right. And the handoff goes to Gonzalez Vega again with a draw play. And he's inside the 45 to about the 44 yard line. Vega on a carry. Hunter Wilson on a stop. Gain of four yards, second and six. So they're picking up four to six yards on a clip every time the guy carries the ball. So Yeah, they've been consistent so far with the run. They're going to Vega almost every time. They're very consistent there. Second and about a oh, long six. They line up with Sagan on the near side wide out. I formation again. Back under center is Mata. And inside give to the fullback. Fumble! Recovered oh. by Frontier. First turnover of the game, and Frontier takes advantage of it. That was John Samaski who pulled it in. And that's just what the doctor ordered for Frontier as they take over on the fumble at their own 47. First and 10 Frontier from the Frontier. I couldn't tell who lost the ball there for Frontier. Was it, uh, was they go to Vega again? I'm not sure it was Vega, but it was the inside, it was the fullback. So I don't think it was Vega. And DeForest is going to throw on first down. Garrett will keep it on the option. Gets hit hard. And down at about the 50, inside the 50-yard line. So it took a, took a wicked hit there. Yeah, it took a pretty bad hit, but it's a good, uh, good feet there by, uh, by DeForest. They're on the side nicely. Got about five, six yards on that. Ball spotted just inside the half-field marker. It'll be second and about six. 
or a long five for the Hawks. That's a great thing about DeForest. When he rolls like that, he can keep it and just run it. Yeah, it helps to have an athletic quarterback and roll out. Pitch goes to Samaski, and he gets brought Samaski down the at about the 47 yard the line the stop. of Chicopee. Cut gain of about two. Gain of a couple yards. It'll be third and four. Third for the and Hawks. about four for the Red Hawks. This is a big third down coming up here for Frontier. You want to take advantage of that turnover and uh, at least get uh, you know, some points on this possession. Same set, full house backfield for DeForest. Pitch goes to Ito on the right side. First down and more. He's into the secondary, and McMillan's brought down at about the 34-yard line. Great run by Ito. Great run by Ito. Big burst up the middle. So the Hawks have a fresh set of downs just inside the 34-yard line for Chicopee. So Frontier starting to move the ball a bit. In motion goes McMillan. Inside give to the fullback. And it's Kirkendall pushes it ahead. Not quite to the first down, but close. Kirkendall doing a nice job of dragging the pile on that. <laughs> Doesn't want to go down easy. By a host of Pacers. Gain of six, second and four. Alec Kirkendall, junior. Not a huge fullback, but one that can definitely run tough. Mm -hmm. And pitch goes outside to Samaski, pulls Samaski over a tackler. First down run for Samaski as he just stack. took out a oh, Chickabee oh. Whoopie tackler. Looking like a boxer there, <laughs> just knocked him over like a bowling pin. <laughs> a tough run by Samaski that time. Another first down for Frontier as they're knocking on the door of the Chickabee end zone. From the 19 yard line. Inside give to the fullback again. Not much Kirkendale there that carry. time. I'm not sure he got anything. There. There's no room to run. Joe Serrano on a stop for Chickabee. No gain. Second and Second ten. Second and ten. Same spot. 19 yard line. Samaski is lined up in the right slot. The motion goes McMillan, the pitch goes to Ito. Ito cuts back, off tackle, and Ito picks up three or four yards, it looks like. He got probably David three. Charles, the second third stop. and seven. Gain of a couple, third and eight for Frontier. Ball spotted at about the 16-yard line. Less than two minutes to go in the first quarter, no score at the yet. At yet. I don't know, do you throw it here maybe? I'm not sure what they do here, but uh, whatever the case is, they're going to have to find some holes to run through if they decide to go on the ground. They haven't gotten their quarterback much involved yet so far. And he's going to roll out. He's the forest. He's going to pass it. Pass. Complete! Complete to Donovan, <laughs> to Donovan Hoffman. Hoffman. That's going to be first and goal for the Red Hawks. Nice roll out by DeForest. He had a tough throw, but they caught it. He had to throw that away from his body, which was not an easy throw, but again, Hoffman right there. And we're going to have, I think, first and goal from about the six. Wait a second. We got a penalty. Oh, flag down. Oh, late Chop flag being thrown in. Chop block on Frontier. That's a tough break. That'll bring him back. Oh, what a shame. That was a nice throw, too. That'll bring a third and about... Let's see. It's a 15 yard penalty. 15 yard, so 15 yard penalty will be. It's just, it's a third, about 17, it looks like. Okay. About 20 for the Hawks. Uh, maybe, yeah, about 20, let's say. Yeah. So the Hawks, instead of going first and goal, they're now third and long. DeForest. Going to roll out. Fires on the sideline, nearly uh, intercepted. Pass, pass intended for Hoffman, but good defense by Chicopee. Yeah, good coverage that complete. time from Chicopee. So fourth and Just long for Frontier. That'll lead the Hawks for the fourth and 20. It's quite certain they're going to go for it. 
So they don't have much of a kicking game, I'm assuming, if they're going for a fourth and long. Well, I think, you know, they're in that end of the field, when you get that, that the deep in the zone, you're going to probably go for it. A punt wouldn't make a lot of sense here. I'm not sure they have a field goal unit. Samaski is the far side wideout. And a whistle timeout. and a timeout called by Frontier for the Frontier Redhawks. Well, we have a minute. We should mention that tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Holiday Pizza, the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Chris Collins, here along with John Meisner, Alec Echo, and Kevin Murphy. Megan Self is also here taking some photos. We should also mention, coming up on November the 11th, we're going to be doing a telethon for the Frontier Regional Music Program, which you can hear playing in the background. And that's going to be at Frontier Regional School. I'll be hosting it. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. It's usually a, a couple of hours, a chance for everybody to, to pitch in and help out the music program. We have lots of different musical acts. We have students playing. We have faculty members. We have acts from outside the Frontier Regional Schools. It's always a lot of fun. It's a fun night of music, and it's all for a great cause. Again, more, more details on that coming up as we get closer, but it's going to be, I believe, on November not 11th, but November 13th, excuse me, November 11th is Veterans Day, so it'll be the week of Veterans Day. Yeah, I think Greenfield High School did that last year. They had a telethon yep. for their high school band program, which is nice. They do it every year. I might make a donation. Okay, so we have three wideouts for Eastman, and he's going to throw on fourth and long. Now he's going to keep it. Gets a hole down the left sideline. Eastman. He's going to go in for the touchdown. Garrett DeForest. What a run by DeForest. <laughs> Garrett DeForest on fourth and long. Decided to keep it on the quarterback option down the left sideline, six points. Boy, he found a lot of room on the left side and just took off. What a great run by DeForest. I'm impressed. Really take advantage of that turnover nicely. That was, that was, I don't think that Trigaby saw that coming. No, and neither did I, honestly. <laughs> So DeForest on the quarterback option, runs it in, six points. Two-point conversion attempt upcoming. And DeForest is going to keep it around end. Is he in? Two-point conversion is good. So Garrett DeForest legs out a touchdown and a two-point conversion. We'll come back up the field with the score. Frontier 8 and Chickabee nothing. This is Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Access Television. The so the Hawks. Frontier Red Hawks draw first Back blood. Eva McMillan to boot it away five. for Frontier. As they get on the board first, eight nothing into Forest touchdown run and a two point conversion. Jeremy Beach. Short kick by Ito, picked up at about. The 30, actually not even going to try to run it back. This going to be brought down at the run 30-yard line, which is where Chickapee will start off. Less than a minute to go in the first quarter, and we'll see if the Pacers can have an answer. We'll see if they answer. They just got to take care of the football, but it's the only mistake they made in the first quarter, really. <laughs> well, you don't want to give this Frontier team any kind of option or any kind of advantage like that. You really got to control the football. Otherwise, they'll make you pay for it, and they just did. Mm -hmm. Of course. High formation again behind Mata. One wide out on the near side. And it's going to be an inside give again John Gonzalez -Vega to Gonzalez Vega up to about the 39 yard line, gain of about. Sam Heber. About nine stop yards. For the Hawks. Mm. Gain of nine. Good run. Second and one. Yeah. Very nice run by Vega. The clock is clicking down in the final 25 seconds of the first quarter. Probably time for one more play. High formation set again. And it's going to be an inside handoff. As always, Vega brought down, by torn by down Hoffman. by the shirt by Hoffman. Nice job to take him down. And that will stop the clock with 7.1 seconds 
And they'll move the chains. First down, ball spotted to run the 44 yard line. It's time for at least one more play. Chicken beef, nope, actually not. That's going to end. We'll have to let the clock run out, actually. <laughs> the first quarter. So we've played one quarter in South Denver at the end of one. It's Frontier 8, and Chicken Beef nothing. Red Hot Football and Frontier Community Access Television. We'll start the second quarter, first to 10 for Chicopee at their own 44 yard line. They play 12 minute quarters in high school football. And Chicopee now moving right to left. And Mata under center, the I formation set. And again, the inside give to Gonzalez Vega, and not a lot there, a couple of yards maybe. John Gonzalez Vega on the he carry. Didn't find a lot of room to run, but. Gain of a yard. Ball spotted just outside the 45 yard line. Second and about nine. Frontier student section is definitely fired up. Cold's not bothering him at all. Now, when you're young, you can take it, I guess. High <laughs> <laughs> formation set again. This time the quarterback will keep it. Matta up the right side and a quarterback keeper, first down territory and more into Frontier's end of the field. Great little keeper there by Matta. Steven Matta on the carry, there was a flag on the play. Well, these quarterbacks for Chicopee and Frontier can really roll out. We've been seeing that early. <laughs> Let's see what the, what the penalty is though. Yeah, I saw a flag come flying in. I'm not sure what that was. Looks like it's gonna be on Frontier. That's the indication, they're gonna step it off against Personal the Hawks. Personal foul on the Red Hawks. Personal foul on Frontier, that gives Chicopee a break. That advances 15 yards to the end of the end of the run. Penalty. And that ball is going to be spotted at the 26, it looks like. First and 10. Couldn't see who committed the foul there, but a costly one looks like. Same set. And again, Gonzalez Vega. Gonzalez Vega on a carry. Pushes ahead. Another Jackson long Sinesky run, close to first down territory, but I don't think he got it. Very nine, close, though. second and one. So that's a couple of nine yard runs Gonzalez Vegas ripped off on this series. Second and just about a yard for Chickapoo. See so they continue to go to Vega here if they go to the other running back or QB. Well, they saw something with that quarterback sneak by Mata that they can exploit if they can do that again. And again, it's going to go to John Gonzalez, Gonzalez Vega. Vega. He's going to have carry. the first down, I'm pretty sure. He looks yep. like he has it. Danny Hoffman on a stop for the Hawks. Carry good for a pace of first down. First and 10 at about the 19 now of Frontier as the Pacers are in business in the red zone. High formation, far, one right, right on the far side. And Mata's gonna call an audible, change the play. And he's gonna keep it, he's gonna go and nowhere. <laughs> and that technically is a sack, I believe, because he never got out of the pocket, really. Yeah, great pressure from Frontier, nice blitz. Had nowhere to run. Well, Mata tried to change the play. He saw that there was, that Frontier had it figured out. Second and 13. Second and 13, a loss of three. House backfield and in motion goes Jacobs. Gonzalez Vega, and Gonzalez Vega again. He's been the workhorse. Four, and picks up probably, I'm going to say, about three or four yards, maybe more. Let's see where they spot it. That's more than three or four. It's going to bring up third and about seven. A timeout for an injured player. And injury timeout. As let's see who. Which side of the ball it's on? I think it's a Chickabee player. It looks down. like a Chickabee player is down here. Yeah. 
And we'll see. So time on the field, we're going to take the break. 8.52 to go in the second quarter. Frontier 8, chicken be nothing. Back at the end of the timeout. This is Red Hot Football. Frontier going to be actually coming. And that's Gonzalez Vega who was injured, and that is significant. As he's been there top back tonight, and he, if he's out for a, the game, that could be a real game changer for Chicken. Wow, what a blow this might be for the Pacers. Been relying him a lot on this uh, in this first half, and yeah, if he doesn't come back, this is definitely going to give uh, Frontier a lot of momentum and a lot of confidence. Well, it's third and seven. Third down and seven for ball the spotted just outside the Frontier 12-yard line. It looks like from the Frontier 11-yard line. So let's see who gets the ball now. Vega's walking off on his own on the sideline. And Mata's going to go to the shotgun. And he's going to throw to the end zone. Going for the left corner of the end zone. Mata's pass. And a pass is caught. Oh, wow. Touchdown. A pacer touchdown. He's going to go to Mata that time. And they are a two-point conversion away from tying pacers. this up. So clearly that's... Uh, not affecting Pacers on that possession. No, that was Jacobs from Mata. 12-yard touchdown pass to make it 8-6 to six with a two-point conversion attempt upcoming. And it looks like Gonzalez Vegas came back in. Or actually, no, he's in the, is he on the bench. Someone came in from the sidelines. We'll see who it is. Two-point two -point conversion attempt upcoming. For Chicopee. And Mata's going to roll and throw it. And the pass incomplete. The pass incomplete. So pass incomplete. We'll come Bears back up the field with the score of Frontier 8. Chicopee 6. This is Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Action Television. Back to return for the Hawks is number two, Ito McMillan. So the Pacers get on the board, eight to six. And Jacobs to kick it away for Chicopee. Ito McMillan back deep for the Red Hawks. Yeah, nice play on defense there by Jack Facilio to stop the two point conversion. That's why Frontier is still leading. And that could be significant if this yes. game continues to be as tight as it seems to be. going to be a short kick, Picking almost an onside kick, by the Hawks. but recovered by Frontier at about the 46-yard line, so good uh, field position for Frontier to start Sam this drive. Mm. First and ten it looked more like an onside kick from, uh, from the Pacers. It did, from the Frontier, but Frontier was ready for it. 47-yard line is where Frontier will start, so a relatively short field. Mm -hmm. You don't usually see teams attempt that earlier. You usually see that at the end of games when they're trying to come back. <laughs> well, a lot of times high school teams will do that if they haven't got a deep kicker. Someone that can, that can send it down to the other end of the field consistently, but I don't know if that was planned or just the way they did it, but in any event, it's a short field for Garrett DeForest and his team. Elon McMillan, although nicely pursued and brought down for a loss. Wow, nothing but pacers there. No, it took three pacers to bring him down. Yeah, I don't know if somebody missed an assignment blocking-wise, but Ito was unceremoniously Met by the front About four of the Pacers. Second and 14. Yeah, somebody missed a guy clearly on the offensive line. <laughs> so the ball spotted at the 43. It's a loss of four. Third and four, er, second and 14, rather, for Frontier. Just under eight minutes to go in the half. So we'll see if Frontier can improve on things in this play. Donovan Hoffman is the near side wide out. And Forrest is going to roll. He's going to keep it. Gets a hole. Flag behind the play. This might be a hole. We'll see what they call. This one might be coming back. Either a hold or a block in the back. One of the two. David Charles on the stop. Let's 
see where they spot it. Definitely on Frontier. Tripping on Frontier. Tripping, okay. So that's going to be, I believe, a five-yard penalty. Uh, maybe not. Is it more than that? It's going to be a 10-yard or 15-yard at least. Uh, looks like a 15-yarder. So second and very long for Frontier. Second down so this, and this drive is not going the way that... Uh, that uh, Coach Gordon wanted to see, for sure. Second and 28. Second and 28 for Frontier. And the pitch goes inside, and not a lot there. Wow. So this is not the drive that Frontier wanted to see happen. Third and long. I don't think maybe, yeah, maybe a yard or two. Carry. Samaski with the carry. Yeah, if you're Don Gordon, you got to be disappointed with this possession. Just too, one too many penalties, a little undisciplined. Time out of the field. We'll take the break. Seven minutes to go in the half. Frontier 8, you can be 6. This is Red Hawk football. Frontier Community Action Total. So third and very long for Frontier as for the Red Hawks. that tripping penalty cost them 15. Plus some pretty good line play for Chicopee who's, the Hawk, they've clearly made an adjustment. Mm -hmm. Eo McMillan is the near side wide out. And DeForest flag on the play. DeForest as DeForest the takes off, and he's deep into Chickaby secondary, but I think this one is coming back. Yeah, this does not look like a free play. <laughs> it looks like a holding penalty. Too bad, because he was well into Chickaby territory. Yeah. And this is going to be a hold, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think there's a reason he had all that room to run because of the, the hold. But again, when he decides to keep it on that option, he's explosive out of the backfield. Yeah, he really chop is. Block chop block on Frontier. So another penalty. Yeah, the few times tonight they have gone to him on the rollout on to, um, to him, they, uh, they haven't been able to find an answer for him. So chop block. So that's going to bring up. They're going to mark him off. So they're going to take the, the yardage rather than decline it. So that's going to push him way back. I have no idea. It's the second and forever now. Yeah, this, this is inside the 20. The first down marker is at the 44 of Chicopee. So you did the math. 36. <laughs> third and 33 for the Hawks. Third and 33. All you got to do is say is third and 30-something. Pretty yeah. much covers it. It's, yeah, it's going to have to take a bomb down the field to get a first down. <laughs> well, he just did it on a, on a, on a, on a quarterback sneak, so who knows? Yeah. Hoffman is going to throw. Pass complete. Pass complete to number 19, Josh. To Samaski, but that's not going to be enough to get him by number 13, close to first down yardage, so we'll have Jacobs. a punting situation here for the first time for Frontier. Fourth down for the Red Hawks. Fourth and 22. And Millen will punt it for the Hawks. High end over end kick. 
taken at about the 39 yard line and not a lot of room for Matta to go. And he still makes something up out of it and gets into frontier territory down to about the 48 yard line. Matta didn't look like he knew Steven where to run Mata that time. Return brought down by Garrett DeForest. Return so a short field for Steve Matta and the Chicago Pacers. Once again, this is a game with playoff implications. Chicopee is ranked fourth in the power rankings. Frontier is ranked second. And Chicopee, I think, needs this win to stay alive in contention for the playoffs. First and 10 from the 49 of Frontier. 5.42 to go in the half. And inside give. Not a lot of room. Brought back down at the about carry. the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard back. Jacobs on the carry. He fell right into the line of scrimmage marker there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. that's going to be a loss of about. Yeah, maybe he gained a yard, but I thought that looked like the original line of scrimmage, but. Let me gain a half yard. Second and a long nine. Again, Gonzalez Vega has been the workhorse back for Chicopee. Injured on the last series. So Matt is going to have to get creative. He's got two wide outs on the near side, so three receivers in total. And he set up in the shotgun. So he's going to throw. Bombs it down the right sideline. Nearly oh, intercepted pass. as the Frontier player was the, the one closest to it. 13, Jerome Jacobs. Incomplete. Was, that pass was intended for Jacobs, but uh, he was in tight Hebert. coverage. Third down and nine so for third and nine for Chicopee. I'm kind of curious who the Pacers can go for uh, as far as the running game if uh, Vega's out. They've got at least two or three other running backs on the roster. I think uh, Jacobs is one, but he lined up as a, a flanker on that play. High formation. Matt is going to keep it on the quarterback draw, and he's going to get to Matt about the 45-yard line. So clearly not having Gonzalez Vega on the field is causing problems for Chicopee. And that's good news for Frontier as it's going to be fourth and six. Gain of about six yards. It'll be fourth Yeah, it's and not easy six. to be creative when your best running back's on the sidelines. They're going to have to punt it here, and they're going to try and pin Frontier deep in their own end. Edo McMillan back, back deep punt. for it. Edo McMillan back to the return for the Red Hawks. Might see a fake here. High snap, and they get the kick away. Headed toward the sidelines, and it's going to go out of bounds. Not a bad kick. It'll be relatively deep in the frontier territory, which is where the Red Hawks will start. First and 10 frontier from the frontier 11-yard line. So that's way back. That's farther back than I thought it went, John. I, thought, I didn't think it went, that, I think it went out of bounds sooner than that, but apparently not. Yeah, this is pretty deep. It's got to be with behind the 10-yard line at least, between the goal line and the 10. It looks like it's spotted just outside the 10. So Frontier will have a long field on this series. They'd love to punch one in before the half and take some time off this clock for sure. All right, here we go. First and 10. Same setup for DeForest. Inside give. Alec Kirkendall, on Kirkendall with it, and he gets a couple. Gain of about two. Jacob Montalvo we'll bring up second and a long gain of a yard, eight. second and nine. Three thirty to go in the half. Frontier leads eight to six. Chris Collins and John Meisner here. And again, we'll be here next week for the Athol Frontier game. That will be senior night, and then we'll figure out where we go from here. Our friends from Bear Country will likely pick up the next Frontier, uh, the Frontier Playoff broadcast, wherever it is, and we'll have it for you on this station as well. McMillan, the far side wideout, 
And they're gonna fire it downfield. Pass complete to Hoffman. And Hoffman's off to the races. Down the right sideline. And he's gonna get brought down deep in Chicopee territory. So Donovan Hoffman. Boy, Hoffman almost took it all the way. What a very nice throw from DeForest. Well, he, he had DeForest had Hoffman and he had Ito. And Hoffman just ran a nice crossing pattern and picked it up on stride. And the Frontier Red Ox in one play go from their end of the field all the way down to the red zone of Chicopee. By far the longest pass First play we've seen 10, Frontier connect Frontier. on this season. Yeah. First and 10 for the Hawks. Deep in Chicopee territory. Inside handoff to the fullback. Nowhere to go. Kirkendall with it. And see if where, they, where they spot it. I don't think he got anything on that one. No gain, second and second ten, and ten. the Pacer 11 yard line. The ball is spotted, I'm gonna say at about the 13. Of Chicopee. And this time it's gonna be a handoff to Ito, Ito. Two men to beat, and he's brought down inside the 10 to about the six. Brought down by number three, Stephen Matta. So Stephen Matta with the tackle on Nina McMillan, but uh, nice job by Ito. They're getting to the outside yards. on the right. Third and three for the Hawks. Third and three for the Red Hawks at about, Trump I'm gonna say just outside the six yard, yard line of Chicopee. They can get one more down before the goal. Pitch goes to McMillan again, off tackle. Pushes ahead, he's close, but not Kenny in. Down at about the two, so it'll be first and goal. Hawk first down, brought down by number one, Brendan Tadeo. First and goal, Red Hawks. First and goal, Frontier. So the DeForest to Hoffman First and goal, Pass Hawks play has set the Frontier Red Hawks up Chicken for their second score. Line. First and goal from the two. That was at least an 80 yard uh, reception from Hoffman, I think. Hoffman's gonna keep 10, it, bust through. Did he get there? Touchdown. Yeah. Touchdown. DeForest, his second score of the game, a two uh, yard Garrett touchdown Garrett quarterback sneak. And it's 14-6. Nothing fancy there, just follow the center up the middle. So that drive infinitely better than the previous one for Frontier, and it gets him in the end zone for the second time. Hawks will attempt a two point conversion. Two point conversion attempt upcoming. Chance to go up 10 here. And Hoffman fakes the pass, does toss it. And it's complete to Elon McMillan. And so that's a two-point conversion is good. We'll bring it up the field with the score. Frontier 16, Chicopee 6. This is Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Access Television. The score of the Red Hawks, 16. So the Red Hawks go up by 10 here with about a minute and a half, minute five seconds actually specifically to go in the first half. And solid drive by Frontier, punctuated by that long pass number from DeForest to Hoffman. McMillan kicks it short, and it bounces down at about the 25-yard line, which is where the Pacers will take it over. Again, Chicopee without their stud tailback, Gonzalez Vega. Went down to injury, and since he has gone out of the game, it's been pretty much non-existent in terms of the Chicopee offense. Yeah, Frontier's really been able to take advantage of that loss. Uh, First and ten it's like ever since Vega went down, Chicopee it's just been all downhill. Yard line. One minute remaining here in the first half. Think how much one player can make a difference. Well, it's when you got. You got a guy who's that you're that dependent on. He goes out of the game with an injury. Yeah, it's going to cause problems. Full well, house backfield. 
Inside handoff goes to, looks like Jacobs. Or Sagan. And he gets up to about the 32-yard line. Javari Dancy. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Javari Dancy that, that carried it. His first touch. And that's a good gain of about six, seven yards, seven, it looks second like. And three. Second and three. Chickabee takes a timeout. And they've actually got three to burn here. As the Pacers would love to get, if they can, one more score in before the, before the half. Pacers looking to get at least a little closer here. It looked like that last possession before Hoffman had that big reception. It looked like Frontier was going to run out the clock. Now it leaves a little bit of time for the Pacers to do a little something. Fifty-two point five seconds to go in the first half. Ball spotted at the looks like the thirty-three yard line of Frontier or Chickabee rather. And inside handoff is going to be good for a first down for Chickapee, which will stop the clock with forty-six point one seconds left, and that was Yancey on the carry. And ball is spotted at the, looks like the 38 of Chickapee. Josh Samaski on the stop. Clock is in motion again. 40 seconds left. Let's see if they can get another playoff. Hmm. Wouldn't be surprised if he tries to air it out here. I'm gonna take a shot down the field. <laughs> that and the shotgun. And a whistle. And another timeout, timeout called, called by, by Chicopee. Chicopee. As they want to talk it over again, I'm sure. Looks like Frontier had the defense, the offense red. But it was unusual. They lined up three backs in the backfield and no wideouts. I don't know what they were thinking there. Maybe they were thinking run, I don't know. But I would, I would, I would toss it downfield. Why not? Yeah, that's what I think. You know, most likely end up being the last play of the first half if they go down the field. So. Although it looks like Mata, Mata has thrown a couple of passes and they've been, he threw a touchdown pass, but he's floated a lot of those balls. They've been very nearly intercepted by Frontier a couple of different times. All right, so first and 10 from the 38 of Chicopee. In the shotgun is Matta. He has one wide out on the far side. He's going to try and throw. He's going to air it out downfield. A bomb down the sidelines. Matta's pass is incomplete. Incomplete. Let's stop it. Good. I'm sorry, Mr. President. That stops the clock with about 10 seconds left with that incompletion. Well, not a bad pass. Picked just good, Samaski. well defended. Samaski was there with the Ten seconds remaining defense. In the first half. So maybe they'll try another one. Second, Second and 10. And 10. From the 38. That one seemed like it didn't float quite as much as the last few used to. Yeah, that one was a little closer to his intended target. The others were floaters. <laughs> so same setup. Shotgun formation. One wide out on the far side for Matt. And he's going to fire it downfield again. This time he's got a guy. Incomplete, though. pass is complete. Oh, it was complete. Okay. I didn't Trayon think he caught it, Tillman. but he did. So complete pass, stops the clock with 3.6 seconds left. Chicopee. Chicopee takes their final time out of the half. So maybe one more shot for the end zone here. I think that's what Frontier is going to talk it over here on this timeout. They want to uh, they want to stop any sort of last second touchdown. Ball spotted at the 39 of Frontier. So that's a game. That was a 33-yard pass play. And I think that the Frontier secondary is going to have to play a little bit of center field here, I think. Mm 
But they want to keep Mata from taking another shot to the end zone. Shotgun Mata fires it downfield. McMillan's the closest to it. Mata's pass. And he's it's very nearly intercepted by Eda McMillan. But that brings to an end the first half. We played one half of football from South Deerfield. The end of one half. It's Frontier 16, Chicopee 6. This is Red Hawk football on Frontier Community Access Television. Tickets in the Frontier fans presenting the Red Hot Sound of Frontier Regional School. It's the 2019 Frontier Regional Marching Band under the direction of Mr. Max Sherrill. Tonight's halftime show featuring the music of Elton John. The first song will be Don't Go Breaking My Heart, followed by Crocodile Rock. And the band will close out tonight's performance with one of the perennial favorites. It's Funky Town by the Lips. Thank you for listening and let's go Hawks.
great hand for the Frontier Regional Marching Band under the direction of Max Sherrill. Great job, man. All right, three, two, one. As we get ready to start the second half, let's recap the scoring from the first half of this game between the Frontier Red Hawks and the Chicopee Pacers. Garrett DeForest opened the scoring with a 29-yard touchdown run. And he completed the scoring with a two-point conversion run to make it 8-0. And then Chickamy came back, and it was Jacobs, Jerome Jacobs, with a 12-yard pass from Stephen Mata. And conversion pass full and complete to make it 8-6. And then Garrett DeForest scored on a two-yard quarterback keeper. And he passed to Edo McMillan for the two-point conversion to make the score 16-6. Of course, that touchdown was set up by an eight-yard bomb between Forrest and Donovan Hoffman that took the ball from deep in Frontier's territory all the way down to the red zone of Chicopee, which is where we stand 16-6 to start this third quarter. Chicopee will get the ball to start this half as Frontier took the ball to start the game. And Edo McMillan will kick it away. Other than the penalties that uh, Frontiers took in the first half, they've had a pretty strong first half. They're up 10 points. The, I'm curious as to how uh, Chicopee is going to Number adjust two, on the running Eagle game without uh, their John Gonzalez Vega. They've, uh, they've Matt has four, basically been airing it out ever since he got three, hurt, but I'm curious as to what the adjustments they'll make on offense. Well, losing, losing Gonzalez Vega, and they did lose him in the first half to injury, uh, has really, I think, affected negatively Chicopee's offensive set. They have not look the same and look nearly as comfortable as they did with him in the lineup. No, and, and Frontier's clearly taking full advantage of that, you can tell. McMillan will kick it short, and it'll be down at about the 40, yeah, the 39 yard line of Chicopee, which is where they will start. Number eight, Brett Fonseca on the recovery. Again, a little First pooch kick there by, uh, the by Eno. Yard line. And it'll be stuck, spotted actually right at the 40, so that's where we will start off. We'll see what Steven Matta has for an offensive set to start this half off. He's got Gunnar Sagan back there you can go to. He's already passed to Jerome Jacobs. And uh, the other guy who's been taking some snaps. Inside handoff. Dancy on a carry. So that's Dancy, who was also taking some handoffs in the first half. He is up to about the 46-yard line or so, so good first down run. Donovan Hoffman on a stop. Gain of five, second and five for the Pacers. Ball spotted just outside the 45 around the 46, so the second and four. Backfield again. And again, the give goes to the tailback. And he is stopped Jabari, Dancy, and at about the original line of scrimmage. So Dancy looks like he's the guy who's going to get a lot of the touches here. And he loses John the yard. Samaski on the stop. No gain on the play. Third and five for the Pacers. Third and five for Chicopee. Clock is in motion. formation again this time for Mata and inside give goes to the tailback and he is close to first down yardage he gets up a little bit slowly Dancy on the carry that was actually Jacobs on the carry on that one Pacers will have a fourth and so we'll two probably just split uh, the runs From between the Jacobs and Dancy I guess. Looking, looking like right now but 
fourth and two, so they're going to go for it here on their own end of the field. This is unusual. Well, this is gutsy. <laughs> Well, they got to do something. They're going to push it forward, and Matt has got the first down and more. So good call there. Carry for the first down. They really can't. I mean, they, they've got to afford to, to move the change it, if at all possible. They can't really punt it right now. They're down by ten. They got to make up some points here. Yeah. So I, I, get, I get the call, but it is it is risky in the early part of the, the second half. No, you're absolutely first right. No, they definitely need points Pacers. here. You can't be down to 10 or many more. <laughs> first and 10 from the 47-yard line of Frontier. High formation set again. And Mata keeps it and has nowhere to go. That almost looked like a broken play, John. Yeah, it looked a little bit messed up. Samaski was in there to break it up. And no gain on the play, second and about 10. Wouldn't be surprised to see him throw it at some point here. Well, Matt has got a good arm. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. He's got two wide outs on the far side. And he's in the shotgun. So this is a passing formation, it looks like. And he's going to drop back and throw it. He's going to air it out down the right sideline. Complete! Pass nice pass. And that was Jeremy, 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 Jerome Jacobs. Jacobs with the catch. Very nice throw from Matta. And an even better catch from Jerome Jacobs. Hey, you called it. They look like they were going to go for a passing play, and they did. <laughs> Well, it was definitely set up in a shotgun formation, which is pretty much what they've been doing when they were going to pass it. So now they're inside Frontier territory at about the 17-yard line. So, again, a long pass play sets up Chicopee as Frontier did in the second from the Chicopee quarter. 14 yard, uh, Frontier 14-yard line. And they'll go back to the ground. Hand off. Right tackle, not a lot of room. Dancy on the carry. And again, that was Javari Dancy. And we'll see what the John spot is. John on the stop. No gain, second go anywhere and 10. On that one. Second and 10. Again, all spotted at about the 17 of Frontier, 7.43 to go in the third quarter. And he's gonna keep it, is Mata. At the right side. Mata on the carry. Out of bounds. Or actually it was in bounds because they winded the, started winding the clock. So that's a gain of about three, maybe four yards. Donovan Hoffman. Third and a long Gain six. About three yards. It'll be. I thought he'd run out of bounds too. He was the close Pacers. to the sideline, but when he was in. So. I thought he was out, but they wound the clock right away, so it must have been in bounds. So Chick could be knocking on the door. And same set. It's time to hand off to those inside. Dancy the again. The Dancy and is brought down. After a gain of about two, so it's going to be fourth and about four. Going to leave the Pacers to fourth down, fourth and three. <laughs> From the Red Hawk 10-yard line. I would expect them to keep it on the ground here, but... They're going to go for it, for sure. They have to down 10, it's just a matter of what play they draw up. <laughs> Matta calls an audible and a whistle, and they're going to call a timeout. Call by as the Frontier had it red. 6.13 to go in the third quarter. Frontier 16. And uh, uh, 6. This is Red Hawk Football. Catch you at the Access Television. So fourth and about a long three for Chicopee. 
as they'll try and get that fresh set of down to keep this drive going. Pitch goes to the tailback. And I don't think he got it. Flag behind the play, though. So we'll see what this is. I don't know if it's a block in the back or a hold. But the flag came in after behind the play. Okay, so the penalty it's, is on the pace. On Chicopee is declined. Is so Frontier will take over on down. Big fourth down stop there for the Red Hawks. Uh, must have been a hold, I think. But either way, the ball goes back to Frontier. So the Hawks will start it in their own end of the field. Up by 10 with six minutes to go, roughly in the third quarter. I would think Frontier is going to run a, a bunch of plays here, Chris. I don't think they want to take their chances up 10 by uh, going to uh, their quarterback. So uh, I think they want to try to take as much clock down as they can. I agree. I think that's that's a smart a smart play, too. And inside Edo handoff. McMillan. Edo has nowhere to go, though, as Chickabee has done a good job of adjusting stop. and sniffing out that off-tackle blast. He hasn't had much luck since they made that adjustment in terms of running. Lost of about three yards, second and They lost and three on that one. Second and 13 now from about the six yard line of Frontier. So there's, there's a danger here. Of, you gotta get the ball out of the briar patch a little bit here. You gotta get at least one first down. And he's gonna throw it. Play action and pass, pass incomplete. For and that was Danny uh, Hoffman incomplete. Hoffman that was the intended Stephen receiver. Maddow. Good pursuit by Chickapoo. Third and 13 for Third the Red Third and 13. Well, that time they had Hoffman double covered, which was smart because he burned him with pretty much the same pattern the last time he ran it. A big third down here for Frontier. They gotta make some yards. Get it out of their end of the field. <laughs> McMillan is the near side wideout. And Hoffman's gonna fire it downfield, incomplete. Was, Moulton, incomplete. Moulton was the intended receiver, so it's going to be the coverage, fourth down, the Hawks, and, fourth and, and Frontier will have to punt it. From the Hawks' seven-yard line. Well, Frontier not able to do anything on that possession. Not good. And now they're going to have to punt from their own end zone, mm -hmm. which is always dangerous. Peter McMillan to punt for the Hawks. McMillan will kick it. Stephen Matta back to receive. And Matta is back at the Pacers. The Frontier 45 yard line. A little Ren boot by Ito. And Matta will take it at the 44. Runs up the right side, slows down, tries to cut back, and is brought down at about the 35 yard line, 34. Flag down Pacers behind flag the play. The play. Ooh, late flag coming in. And that's going to be a personal foul, I'm pretty sure, on someone. See what they get on this, but well, regardless, uh, Chickamy's gonna have great field position here. See what's on. No, it's on Chickapoo, so that's they're gonna hurt them. Legal block it's gonna hurt on the an illegal block on the Pacers, so that moved them back a little bit. So not as good field position, but still not bad. Yeah. I couldn't tell who committed that foul, but it was close to the sideline it happened. Well, it looked like it was behind the play, long after the play had been, been blown dead. The refs had to spot this football where, where they're going to put it. Looks like it's going to be at about the 40-yard line. That's a lot of the refs are. First and 10 for Chicopee. Actually, going to spot it. At the 45. First and 10 Pacers from the Red Hawk 45 yard line. All right. Klaus backfield behind Mata. And it's going to go to the tailback. And good run. First down yardage and more. Still on his feet. He's still going. 
and he's brought down inside the five. I think that was Dancy. It's first and goal for Chicopee. Boy, Dancy really extended that run. I, th I thought he was going to be tackled a lot sooner than he did. <laughs> so first and goal from the six. It's a 39-yard carry. First and goal, Chicopee. So that was not what Frontier wanted to have happen. It looked like he got a nice block on the outside and just got the end, got the sideline. From the Red Hawks, six yard line. So first and goal from the six for Chicopee. Inside handoff. Dancy on the carry. Nowhere to go that time. Might have got John Samaski on the stop. Maybe a yard. Second and goal for Ball the Pacers. Ball at the five. Second and goal. From the five-yard line. Mata under center. High formation. Again to the tailback. Number 13, uh, Jacobs. Jerome Jacobs. Carries Off right tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, touchdown for Chickabee. Mm. It's definitely going to make things a lot closer now. That makes the score 16 to 12 with a two point conversion attempt upcoming. Nothing fancy there, just an Bases will attempt a two point conversion. Play. This will be a big stop for Frontier if they can keep them out of the end zone for this two-point conversion. And the give is going to be to the tailback. Jabari Off tackle Dancy. again. Dancy. Is the conversion end? is no good. And, and the two-point conversion run failed. Stop stopped them. Come back up the field with the score, Frontier 16, and Chicken be 12. This is Red Hawk football, Frontier to the access television. Reactus McMillian back to return for the Hawks. So Frontier gives up a early second quarter touchdown, and they still lead 16 to 12, and Chicken will kick off. Edel McMillan back deep for the Red Hawks. And they kick it toward the sideline, and it's going to be downed at about the 38 yard line thereabouts. We'll see where it's spotted, and Frontier will take over there. Josh Samaski on return. Well, they're not going to give Ito any chances to run it back, that's for sure. Not, from been, the frontier. Yeah, not been near a kickoff at this point in the game. And it's about the 37 yard line, they say, so that's where Frontier will start it off. So Hawks hoping to have a better, better go of it than they did their first series in this half. Yeah, anything other than that last possession would be an improvement. Hoffman's going to throw on first down. Fires it down the sideline looking for Dodge. Intercepted. Oh, almost no. intercepted. I thought he had it. <laughs> well, he did for a second, but it falls incomplete. Matta was the one closest to that one. The pass intended for Dodge. Mm -hmm. And he drew triple coverage. That was a low percentage situation for Dodge. Yeah, maybe not the best area of the field to throw the football. Triple coverage on, on uh, Hoffman there. Second and ten. That was Dodge's first touch of the game, or near touch of the game. He's back in there, in the backfield, in the right slot. And Hoffman's going to throw again on second down. He's going to scramble. He's looking for someone to throw to, and he's going to get sacked. Mm. Not enough time. Good just, coverage downfield. Now just couldn't. Just ran out of time. Just didn't have anybody 52. to throw to. Good coverage down the field. Jacob Montalvo. And that was. Uh, Jacob Montalvo, the, four yards the junior, the third and 14 lineman the with Hawks. the sack on that one. So that's a loss. 
of four, third and 14. At about the 33-yard line of Frontier. Same setup, in motion goes McMillan. And he's gonna throw again on third down. Screen pass to McMillan out of the backfield complete. complete he knows got some run. McMillan. And he gets back up a couple of yards ahead of the original line of scrimmage. And it'll be fourth down for Frontier. We'll better throw that time for McMillan going to his seven. left instead of going deep down the field. So, but only two yards on the pickup. So it's gonna be a punting situation again for Frontier. As Edo McMillan jumps back I'm surprised they didn't run the ball at all in that series. They, yeah. they threw it every time, which the is Pacers unusual. Is number three, you Stephen don't Mack. see that in high school football too often. McMillan, short kick. It's going to be down and bounce back. And about the 47-yard line is where it's put by down by Frontier. So Chicopee will have, uh, again, good the field position to start this series with a chance to take the lead. 47 yard line and Chickadee takes over first and 10. All I can think of, John, is that Chickapee's sort of figured out Frontier's running game. Yeah. And so they decided to go to the air, which I guess makes sense, but not a lot of great sort of opportunities in that uh, particular series for Frontier. Yeah, either Chickapee's figured out how to defend the, their running backs or or maybe this Frontier doesn't have a lot of confidence right now, one or the other. High formation for Chicopee. Not as gonna throw on first down. He airs it downfield, looking for Jacobs. And did he get it? Yes, Complete to Jacobs. Well covered there by Frontier. This is starting to feel like an NFL game now with all the passing. Yeah. Well, Hebert was right there, but again, Jacobs had the height advantage, and he snaps it out of the air, and it's a first down for Chicopee, well inside Frontier territory. Yeah, nice grab by Jacobs there. This is a huge uh, series for Chicopee. Ball spotted at the 27 of Frontier. Not a now. Handoff inside. That's going to go to Dancy. Tavari Dancy. Nowhere to go. On the carry, Edo McMillan. Forward momentum, Sam though, will give him, at, well, I guess they're going to give him at least, wow, six yards. Mm. Looked like he was stopped. Six, second and four. So, second and four, I guess. Less than a minute to go here in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of forward progress there. <laughs> I guess. It looked like he was pushed back, way back by Frontier's guards, but I don't know. Jacoby knocking on the door. Same setup. And it's going to go again to Dancy. Dancy He's got a first carry. down and more in the front, deep into Frontier territory inside the 20. Well, after a inconsistent second quarter, Chicopee is making up for it. Offensively, they've controlled the possession in this quarter, and they've moved the ball pretty well, much at will. And that's going to bring to an end the third quarter. We played three quarters in South Bend for the field of three at the Frontier 16. Chicopee 12, fourth quarter action upcoming. Red Hawk football on Frontier from the Access Television. I want to take a moment to wish good luck to Frontier golfers Michael Kordoff and Gunnar Moore, who both qualified to play in the State Division II tournament Tuesday at the Taconic Golf Course in Williamstown. Good luck, Mikey and So Gunnar. first and ten, Chicopee to start the fourth quarter. So we'll see if the Red Hawks can stop him. Ball first spotted around the 15. Pacers. And a handoff inside. Dancy, Dancy is Drop. brought down. By Donovan Hall. Very quickly. Got a couple of yards though. And seven. Go, 
Second and seven, just outside the 10 for Chicopee. And Frontier has led throughout this game. Frontier's led throughout this game, but Chicopee's controlled the last uh, quarter or so. They absolutely have. Matta is going to throw to the corner of the end zone, incomplete. That is That'll bring up third and seven. Coming for number 29, Treyon Tillman, incomplete. Broken up by Jake Dodge. Third and seven for the Pacers. So Matta brings up his guys, I formation again. And David Charles is in the left slot. Now in motion was Jacobs. The pitch goes to Dancy. Dancy, on Dancy the cuts outside and is brought down. Carry good for a pace. Good for a first down. down. And I believe it'll be first and goal. A timeout for an injured Red Hawk. Red Hawk player is down on the ground. He got an injury. I can't see a number from here, can you? No, he's lying on his back. I can't see the number either. Gordon's going to come out and check his player. Again, a reminder, if you're watching this on YouTube, you already know this, but you can watch all these Frontier football and sports games at the FCAT Media page at Frontier Community Access Tele at the uh, YouTube.com, excuse me, and FCAT.TV has all the listings of when you can watch these games on our channels. There's here for 59, Ethan Russell. So the Frontier injured player is back up. Looks like it's Ethan Russell for Frontier that went down. He's walking off on his own power, which is a good sign. That's a good sign. So first and goal. First and goal for the For Chicopee at about the six. They're going to go motion again. And the inside handoff bounces off one tackler, and he Dancy is into the end zone. Dancy for a six-yard touchdown run. Number 12. And that Javari gives them the lead for the first time, 18-60. Boy, what a comeback here by the by Chicopee. No quit in them, down 10 points. Now have to go chance to go at least two or maybe four with a two-point conversion. This is not what Frontier expected, and their offense has stalled. Chicopee will attempt to And Chicopee has division. moved the ball pretty much at will here in the second half. Yeah, Frontier's definitely kind of sat back. They've looked dead in the second half. And Matt is going to throw, lobs it to the end zone. And pass complete for the two point. Pass is complete. So we'll bring it back up the field with the score. It could be 20 and Frontier 16. This is Red Hawk Football and Frontier Community Access Television. So Chickabee takes their first lead courtesy of the six yard touchdown run by Javon Dancy. And the Jacobs point after pass from Mata is good. So just like that, they were down by 10, now they're up by four. Two unanswered scores. Frontier is going to have to do something here on this series, I think. Yeah, this is a must-score situation for the Red Hawks. Chickabee's had all the momentum in the second half. McMillan back deep for Frontier. And a short kick. Taken at about the 43. Brought up to about the 48-yard line, which is where Frontier will start it off. First and 10. So DeForest, Andrew Logan on return. in the last series, threw three passes Green and Hawks didn't do much. Let's we'll see if they bring the ball, put the ball back on the ground here. 
They really haven't run a lot of sweeps with McMillan. I, I would like to see him try that a couple of times. Yeah, I think they should go to McMillan a little more as well. It'll definitely help. McMillan now goes in motion. And the shotgun to Forrest is going to run it on a quarterback keeper out of bounds. Good gain of about seven or eight there. And DeForest also hasn't really won the quarterback option as much, I think, in the second half as they they were in the first half. They're moving the ball pretty well with that sort of mixed, different uh, offensive look. It's a gain of about six, second and four. And they're inside Chickabee territory about the 48. You know, see if they go back to mixing it up here. They couldn't do it earlier because uh, Chickabee was really pressuring them deep in their own end of the field. Now McMillan goes in motion again. Out of the gun. Inside give. Alan Kirkendall on the and carry. Kirkendall doesn't get much. Maybe a yard or two. Gain of a yard. That'll bring up third and about three. Third and four. Ball spotted at the 47 of Chickapee. Big third down conversion here, John. Yes. And McMillan goes in motion again. And it's going to be kept by DeForest. He's on the left side, but he's got no blocking. He's out of bounds, just shy of the first down. Jerome Jacobs. That was just not well executed in terms of blocking on the left side. No. And nowhere to run, just had to run out of bounds. I think Frontier should go for it here on they, fourth they, down. They I have think to. They got fourth it. On the loss of one. Fourth and four. 48 yard line. Very important, uh, very important down here. Probably the most important down of the game for Frontier at this point, trailing by four. I agree. Edo's going to drop back into punt, so. Mm. Whistle. Timeout, Time out Chicopee. I thought that looked like Frontier might have been setting up for a fake, but mm, they're right. stamping it. They're going to kick it away. So they're, they're, I guess their feeling is give the ball out to Chicopee and let the defense try and stop them and get the ball back. I don't think Chicopee was ready for that pawn. They look like they probably anticipated they were going to go for it. <laughs> well, I thought they were going to go for it too. I would have thought in this situation, less than 10 to play, down by four, you would, uh, you would think about it, but. It's also a possibility they were trying to get Chickapee to jump. Uh, that's offside. what I that's what I was thinking too on that as well. Maybe they're trying to get him to jump offside, but apparently Gordon trusts his defense, I guess. But I mean, <laughs> I don't see how you could trust them having allowed the last 14 straight points. Well, I mean, let's give Chickapee some credit too. They've they've actually implemented a game plan that's worked despite having their best tailback on the bench with True. an injury. I mean, the guys who have stepped up have been Dancy and Jacobs. They should have been the offense along with Matter. That's been the battery for the Pacers. So. It might have been a situation where they were trying to get somebody to jump, but we'll see if they try to punt it away. I would almost say you go for it here, but it looks like they're going to play it more conservatively. Well, they're going to go. So I think that punt was an attempt to get somebody to get jump off sides. So here we go, fourth and four for Frontier. We're gonna give it to Edo off tackle. First down and more. That's what you want right there. Oh, big first down for Frontier. They went to Edo like we were anticipated they would. And he did not let them down. They haven't run that play since the first half. I'm not sure why. You got a first down and more. 37 yard line for Frontier. Yeah. And a fresh set of downs. Yeah, they have been working in the first half. I don't know why they abandoned it so far for so long. Well, we're going to see. It's going to be uh, shotgun formation for DeForest. Ito goes in motion, and DeForest is going to run it. He avoids a tackle, gets the corner, first down territory, and all the way down inside the 25-yard line for Garrett DeForest. Nice job by DeForest there. First down. Injured chicken player behind the play. Again, the quarterback option works. And when you got a guy with that kind of speed to the outside, that's what you do. You, you run him until they can stop it. You run it until they can stop it. And they haven't stopped it the last couple times. Mm -hmm. Can't see the number of the injured Chickabee player from here. Is that Dancy? 
Yeah, it's, that's that's Dancy. Oh, so that's the second running back coming out of this game. So Dancy is out of the game. Although he's walking off on his own power, whether he'll come back or not, we'll see. But he's been the guy who stepped in offensively for the injured Gonzalez Vega. Well, it's going to be tough for uh, Chickamy to continue without two running backs. But, but being that they've done so well without them and really stepped up, it's been next man up, but it hasn't really changed them much. From the Pacer 25-yard 25 25-yard line. line is where the ball is spotted to Chicopee. Frontier with a fresh set of downs. First and 10. And again, the force in the shotgun. Edo goes in motion left to right. Edo, the lead blocker for DeForest. DeForest cuts Garrett outside, DeForest one to beat, and knocked out of bounds. And that was uh, bordering on a late hit. Knocked out of bounds by... Yeah, that, that hit was very borderline. Surprised the flag wasn't thrown. So it's a gain of nine. Carry good for it, oh, no, they gave it for, for the game of first down. So first down for Frontier. At about first and ten the 16. Ox. From the Pacer 12-yard line. We we'll call it the 12 then. <laughs> first and 10 from the 12. 8.30 to go in the game. Frontier trailing by four, but knocking on the door. A direct snap. Alec Kirkendall on to Kirkendall. By host it doesn't Pacers. go much, but... That's the first time they've used a direct snap to a back again, about one on that one. Wouldn't be surprised if they go back to Forrest uh, again on the uh, the quarterback option. It's been working so far. Yeah, I mean, every time they've run it, it's been a success, it looks like, for for Frontier. And they run lead, you know, with that lead block, and then DeForest just sort of follows him. Second and nine from the 11. Two wide outs on the near side. DeForest in the gun. He's gonna keep it, and he's gonna run DeForest into a couple of tacklers, still on his feet. Brought down at about the 10 yard line, so that didn't go anywhere. Jacob Montelvo, David Charles. Tried a bit of misdirection there, but did not get anywhere. Hawks third down. Third about eight. Third and eight from the 10. Seven twelve to go. And now a whistle and a timeout. Chickapee will take the break. Seven one to go in the game. Chickapee twenty. Frontier sixteen. This is Red Hot Football on Frontier Community Access Television. That was Chickapee's last timeout, and it's third and eight for Frontier at around the 10 yard line of Chicopee. Frontier wants to punch one in here if they can. DeForest under center. Fumble! Fumble on the play. On the play. Fumble snap, and I think Chicopee's got it. Oh, bad oh, break. What a costly turnover for Frontier. Looked like they were just about to punch it in. Yeah, that was not something that you wanted to see happen oh, if you're a Frontier Redhawk oh, fan. So ill-advised. Well, it was looked like just a bad snap, a, bung, a bungled exchange from center. And that happens sometimes in high school football, but it couldn't happen at a worse time for Frontier mm -hmm. as they surrender the ball to Chicopee. And now Chicopee, I mean, the, the one thing in Frontier's advantage is they have three timeouts left. Chicopee. Has Pacers the ball, and, and all they got to do is keep the ball on the ground and maintain possession. Yeah, if there's any good news on this for Frontier, is that Chickabee's deep on their own end of the field, so they're going to have to play good defense if they want to get the ball back. But if Chickabee want to run the clock out with the ground Nada. game. Hands it off inside, and nowhere to go. going to be a gain of about a yard. Second and nine. Of maybe a yard. Second and nine. Clock is in motion. 6.35 to go. <laughs> 
Mata under center again, I formation. He's got David Charles as the fullback. And Gandalf goes to the tailback. Dancy back into the game, but doesn't have very far to go. It's gonna be no gain, third and nine. is in motion, 5.43 to go. John Samaski on the last stop. Actually, they lost the yard on that one, so it's third and 10. For the Pacers. So if they can make a stop here, Frontier might get one more whack at it. I formation again. And pass on third down. Incomplete, nearly intercepted. Yeah, that was very underthrown, nearly intercepted indeed. So that's going to be fourth and ten. They're going to have to punt it. Well, Frontier got exactly what they wanted. They're three and out, so they will have another chance with about 5.15 to go. Jerome Jacobs drops back to punt for the Pacers, and Eagle McMillan back at the 44-yard line. So barring something unforeseen, Frontier will have great field position. Jacobs to punt it, nearly blocked. End over end, it's gonna roll. Edo's not gonna touch it, and they're gonna down it. At about the 48 yard line, so a pretty good punt, all things being equal. But a short field for the Red Hawks as they try to come back and take the lead back. Again, they were knocking on the door at the 10 yard line and they fumbled on the snap. Ball exactly at midfield. So we'll see what Don Gordon has in store for the Chicopee defense. Well, so far the Chicopee defense hasn't been able to stop the quarterback option. I wouldn't be surprised to go back to it again. Shotgun formation again. And he's going to throw on first down to Forrest. Fires it downfield, incomplete. So pass, Intended for Hoffman Donovan Hoffman, well defended and well pursued. Good uh, pass rush there by Chickabee. Yes, a good coverage uh, by Chickabee on, uh, on Hoffman the there. Hawks. Second and 10 from the 50. From the 50 yard line. Again, Frontier has all three of their timeouts, so they can stop the clock if they need to. McMillan's in the left slot. Shotgun formation again for DeForest. And he's going to throw to Mito on a slant pass. Complete. complete. McMillan Ito down McCoy. the left sideline, thrown down. First down territory. Down again, a little pass in the flat. Nothing fancy, but well done. Nice pass to McMillan. Ball is spotted at the 28 yard line for Frontier. Clock is in motion, 4.40 to go. McMillan again in the left slot. Shotgun formation for Hoffman. And Donovan is going to roll. He's going to get sacked. The Forrest dropped for loss by 52. The Forrest was rolling left, looking for McMillan. And McMillan was well covered, so that's a sack and a loss of about three. And it was Jacob Montalvo with the sack here on McMillan. Loss of two, second, loss of three, second and 13. Second and 13 for Frontier. Samaski is lined up on the right side, a tight end formation. And McMillan's the near side wide out. And DeForest hands it off. Up the middle it goes. Josh to Samaski, and he gains a few yards. Desmond Martinez on the stop. Time Frontier will call their first time out. We'll take a break. 342 to go in the game. Frontier trailing chicken be 2016. This is Red Hawk football in Frontier Community Access Television. All right, Red Hawks now. They have two timeouts left. They have the ball. Third and 13. 
342 on the game clock. Third and about nine. DeForest under center again. In the shotgun, actually. DeForest is going to run it. Number 10, it's a scene. And out of bounds. Good enough for a first down, I believe. Yeah, definitely enough for a first down for DeForest. Very close to a Red Hawk first down. Not very close. And they have to measure this. They spot this, actually. It's a little closer than I thought. Uh, nope, they gave it to him. Okay. I thought we were looking at a measurement, but it's first down for Frontier. Forrest under center. He's got a full house backfield the behind him. Yard line. And the pitch goes, actually, DeForest keeps it. But he's given to McMillan. McMillan, McMillan actually got the, the toss. It looked like at first glance, DeForest is going to keep him, but he pitches to McMillan last second. Ego gets about four yards. A bit of a split second decision to give him the ball. Second and six for the Red Hawks. Jabari Bancy on a stop. Clock Game is in motion. Four yards, second and six for the Hawks. Pitch goes on the inside to Samaski. Samaski's pushing ahead. He's close. And he's brought down inside the five yard line, or just outside the five yard line. First and goal, Frontier. Boy, Samaski was pushing and shoving like it was nobody's business. He was not going to go down easy without a fight. He got a lot of yards in that. First and goal from the six for Frontier. As Josh Samaski puts them in scoring position. Under center again, DeForest to Ito, McMillan. Is he in? He's close. Down to about the, looks like the four, maybe the three yard line. Dancy on the stop. Gain of a couple yards, second and goal from the Pacer four yard line. Second and goal from the four. Two minutes to go. Frontier can take back the lead with a score here. Inside give, McMillan. nothing going there. McMillan stopped up. Boy, if, if Frontier can score here, that Jake would leave Montalvo. very just about almost very little time left for Lost the red uh, for uh, the Pacers to mount a comeback. And no timeouts. And no timeouts. You're right. Which is exactly what it seems like is the game. They're going to take as much time off this clock as possible. The force comes and gets the play. This is not a gimme, by the way. You know, right now it's third and goal from the five. There's a loss of one on that run. The forest under center. The forest is going to keep it. Cuts back across. The forest. Did he get the first down? Well, it's a first and goal. He fumbled. Oh, fumble boy. recovered by Chicopee. Are you kidding me? The Pacers. I wasn't sure if it came out, but it did come out Number before he went down on the ground. I thought he was down by contact, but they're going to say the ball popped out, and Chicopee recovers the fumble on the two-yard line. Oh, my goodness. The second fumble from Frontier in this fourth quarter. It's really cost him precious points. I thought he was down too, Chris. I, I didn't think the ball had come out before he had uh, hit the ground. It, but It looked like he was down by contact, but there's no instant replay in high school that, that's a sh I wish there was review at times like this. I thought he was down. In any event, with 1.05 to go, now this is a tough situation for Chickadee because they've got to run it. They can't take a knee or they'd back, be back in the end zone right. or close to it. And they would. I guess they could surrender a, a two-point safety if they wanted to. Um, it would still have the lead. Yeah, it wouldn't make a difference if they give up a safety, but uh, they have to run. They don't want to turn it back over. And they're going to run it off tackle. Frontier will have to take a timeout yeah. to stop the clock. Yeah, I was just going to say Frontier has two timeouts to use. They're going to use one of them now. On the field. Wow. So 
unusual to see Frontier Jake cough up the ball in the fourth quarter at all, but yards, much less twice yeah. inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, very disappointing, I'm sure, for Frontier's coaching staff. Because it looked like they were going to punch it in and take the lead and win this game. But Yeah, that, that, that's, those kind of things keep coaches up at night, I can imagine, just to, to think the ones that got away, and this one may be getting away from Frontier if they're not able to pull off a miracle in the final seconds. Chickabee got four on that one, so it'll be second and six. 58.5 seconds left. And you go back to some of the play calling, John, earlier in the quarter and a half, and I mean, that first series where they threw the ball on three consecutive downs, you gotta wonder if they'd won the ball, would they have had more success? I don't know. We'll never know. It's always a game of coulda, woulda, shoulda if you lost. It always is. <laughs> so second and six. Second and six. And the inside give again, brought down, that will stop the clock again. And Frontier will take their final timeout with 53.6 seconds left. So one more first down wins this game for Chicopee, but they've got to get seven yards. No gain in a play, it'll be third and five. Actually a loss of a yard. Yeah, if Frontier is able to stop them on this third down and force them to have to punt, they, they may have to go deep down the field here. They won't have much time on the clock to run it. So both teams have exhausted their allotments of timeouts. A first down for Chicopee wins the game. A stop here would force them to punt and may give Frontier one more whack at it. Third and seven for the Pacers. So third and seven for Chicopee. Ball is just inside the five yard line. Side handoff, Dancy and it's and not going to be enough for the first down as Dancy Dancy's carries it. Hoppen, and but the clock is not going to be able down. to stop. Fourth down, and I don't think fourth and a yard. Fourth and, a yard. and they're going to let the clock roll. No timeouts left, so the clock's just going to keep rolling, and I think. They can let it run down. He didn't run out of bounds, so the clock's still running. It's a fourth and one, and they're not, they're not even going to probably come to the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be it. Oh, flat, uh, they, they stop the clock with 5.3 seconds. Delay of game is the call. It'll be a five-yard delay. So it'll be a five-yard penalty, penalty, which is not a big deal because they could take a knee and end it without worrying about going into the end zone. So good clock management there by Chicopee. Mm -hmm. You see that more in basketball when in the last possession when teams trying to run out the clock. Exactly. <laughs> the clock clock. Mm -hmm. Mata can take a knee and that will be it. So Chicopee with an impressive comeback. Two unanswered touchdowns in the second half. Six. And they're going to come back and strengthen their chances for the postseason. And they're going to beat Frontier as... Mata's just going to run it and out of bounds, and that will be the end of the game. So the Chickabee Pacers come into South Deerfield, and they come away with a big win over the Frontier Redhawks on the second Redhawk loss this season. The final score in Chickabee defeats Frontier 20 to 16. Final thoughts, John? I was impressed with Chickabee tonight. I, I I mean, considering they lost two running backs in this game, that did not stop them at all. It didn't ruin their spirits. Uh, and uh, 
you know, the fourth quarter, was, really the whole second half was really the difference for Frontier. They played so well on offense in the first half with uh, with their with a good balanced offensive attack, but uh, those two turnovers that the really in their red zone really cost them this game. It really did, and it's unfortunate because they were you can't say they didn't have shots the shots to win this game and take the lead back, but tough break for Frontier as uh, they look forward to their final home game at least for the regular season next week here against the Athol Red Raiders. Final score, 20 to 16 in favor of Kickapee. My broadcast partner, John Meisner, and our executive producer, Kevin Murphy, and our associate producer, Alec Eklund. Chris Collins saying so long from South Deerfield. We'll talk to you next time on Frontier Football and Frontier Community Access Network.